It's been a bit since I have done a Get Live, but happy, happy Tuesday. And today we are going to be talking about carbonic maceration. And I think it's kind of a confusing thing for some people. Um, it's actually a rather old technique, kind of an original technique um, that is now once again, just like everything else, what is old is new again, is coming to be a very hot topic. So the, in, the concept of carbonic maceration was actually invented by Michael Flanc, 1934. So Michael Flancy has been doing the, or created this quite some time ago. And at that time, he was taking a concept that was about storing apples and trying to keep them a lot, you know, regular or able to be eaten for a longer period of time. So at that time, the apples were stored under carbon dioxide, and this would allow them to prevent from them rotting. And so he theorized that if he did the same thing with grapes, that we could then preserve the grapes even longer. But unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to think about it, uh, that did not work out. So what happened is as he put the grapes under the as you put the grapes under the carbon dioxide, the grapes began to ferment thanks to the natural yeast on the skins. And the juice had lower alcohol, had unique flavors, and this was due to that blanket of carbon dioxide. And since we used, or since he used that blanket of carbon dioxide, what he did was it was named maceration carbonique or carbonic maceration. We have known this process for quite some time, and it is the standard process of making in the Beaujolais uh, Nouveau, right? It also has been popular in other regions such as Rioja, Italy, Barolo, and Barbaresco in Georgia, where these Kaviri um, were used to aid in the maceration. So this is actually from 18, uh, 1881, and this is very much a traditional way of making wine. Now in Beaujolais Nouveau, right? Uh, Beaujolais Nouveau, uh, that's probably the most common place where we know about carbonic maceration. And it is strictly regulated by the French government. And it is released annually on the third, thir on the third Thursday of November at precisely 12.01 a.m. So, we are going to talk about regular wine making first before we can get into what carbonic maceration is. So basically in red wine making, right, what happens is we pick the grapes either by hand or mechanically and are brought to the winery. The grapes are then de-stemmed, meaning they are taken off of their stems and then they are crushed, juice to be released. Once that juice is released, it becomes in contact with the skins and that allows for color extraction as well as flavor and textural compounds that could be into the wine itself, right? So fermentation occurs either spontaneously with the native yeast or we can add commercial yeast to it. Now, after fermentation is completed, the juice is of the skins and the wine then begins the aging process and whichever method the winemaker wants to do. So, right, we can do stainless steel, tank, uh, cement, whatever they want. Then if they want racking, fining, filtering, all of these are optional and then it gets bottled. Now, this is different when it comes to carbonic maceration. So with carbonic maceration, okay, uh, with carbonic maceration, the grapes are harvested usually by hand, and then what happens is they are not destemmed. Okay, so they stay in they stay in contact with their stem, so they are kind of in that whole cluster, and then the the wine itself becomes fermented while the grapes are still attached to the stems, not crushed. The they are put in a tank, and then that tank is filled with carbon dioxide. And that's the important part of carbonic maceration, that carbon dioxide. What that carbon dioxide does is create, that blanket is going to cover those grapes, and it's going to create what is called an anaerobic environment, or no oxygen. And this is allowing the yeast that are on the skins, naturally occurring on the skins, to make each grape its basically own fermentation vessel. So the fermentation is occurring 
inside each individual grape. As the yeast, as the yeast consume, uh, consume the sugar, they produce the alcohol and the grapes become naturally crushed under that weight of the alcohol. So they start to soften and they start to break down because of the weight of that alcohol. The result of carbonic is a very fruit forward wine. It's low in tannins and alcohol, usually high in acidity, bright wine, right? And these wines are made with the understanding that they are to be drunk young. Carbonic maceration increases the varietal characteristics of the variety and can add more character to those that might not have that aromatic excitement, such as a Gamay. It can also of the aggressive distinctness of some of those other grape varieties such as French hybrids. So carbonic maceration is often confused with another winemaking uh, technique known as whole cluster fermentation. Now whole cluster fermentation is different in the fact that although they are not destemmed, there is carbon dioxide. So there's no carbon dioxide blanket over the fruit and there, so it's made in an aerobic, right? It's not that anaerobic. So, finally, the last type of thing that we can discuss that is relative to this is semi-carbonic maceration. So as the name suggests, this process is a combination of both carbonic maceration and whole cluster fermentation. So in this process, the grapes remain on and they start their fermentation under the carbon dioxide blanket. After approximately a week, the grapes are pressed and the yeast is added to the juice to con continue the fermentation in an, anaerob in an aerobic ferment uh, aerobic. So as the name suggests, it's semi. It is first in the carbonic maceration, then in a whole cluster, they come together. We get a little bit higher alcohol in the wine and a little bit more tannic structure. So I hope that that clears up what carbonic maceration is, tells you everything there is about those three processes, how they're similar and how they are different. And as I said, is once again new, right? So it's been around for a very long time, right? Um, 1934, and it is coming back again as a great idea of how to make a lower alcohol wine, which it seems to be what are looking for today. So if you have a topic that you would like me to cover in Get Live with Jersina Wines, please leave a comment. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, thank you for the hand clap. I appreciate that, Aaron. Let me know if there is another topic you would like me to cover and get live. Head over to dracinawines.com. Check out behind the scenes to see some other topics that I've talked about. You can also watch other videos on YouTube. And of course, if you are in the Paso area, please feel free to stop by our tasting room on the corner of 13th and Pine and give us a uh, chance to show you our wines and let us turn your moments into great memories. So have a great week. Hope you have some wonderful wines and uh, let me know what you think about this. Okay, slancha.